Judy, I'm really excited to be talking to you. I'm so glad that you're here. For those of you who don't know Judy Krasna, Judy is the Executive Director of FEAST, which stands for Families Empowered and Supporting Treatment for Eating Disorders. This is an international organization that has been helping families and loved ones around the world figure out how to help someone they care about get through an eating disorder. So Judy, I'm really excited to have you here and to have this conversation. Thanks well, for thank being here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited too. It's going to be fun. Well, let's start with, you've met probably, I was going to say hundreds, but probably thousands and thousands of families who've been touched by eating disorders. And I would love just kind of at a high level, any themes around what you've seen, what misconceptions exist when you're first meeting families who've been touched by eating disorders? There are a lot of misconceptions about eating disorders. Um, you know, parents who have boys, um, you know, or, you know, adolescent males, um, it, it takes them a long time to kind of catch on because, you know, eating disorders in boys doesn't present the same way as eating disorders in girls. So um, we definitely see that. Um, and some of the misconceptions are around, you know, you have to be at a very low weight to be sick. Um, so parents are kind of confused because it doesn't look like what they think an eating disorder looks like. Um, so it kind of takes them a while until they come to the conclusion that their child needs treatment. And a lot of times the parents have to fight their medical provider to get the diagnosis. Um, I mean, I know I did. Um, I saw that my daughter, you know, she said she was going on a diet with a friend and I was like, no, you don't need to go on a diet. She'd always been thin. And she said, no, 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 it's not a diet. It's just healthy eating. And, you know, my daughter didn't okay. eat a healthy thing in her life. I mean, yeah. she was like the pizza, you know, ice cream, pasta, French toast, junk food kid. Um, you know, my other two kids at some point kind of like they're eating normalized when they got to be around 12 or 13, they kind mm -hmm. of joined us as adults, um, mm -hmm. you know, when we had dinner, but this one like was a holdout. And so I was thinking, oh, okay, good luck with that. And, you know, it just spiraled into something else. And it took me a long time to see it. And when I did see it, obviously I took her to the doctor and the doctor kept saying, no, I don't think so. And she looks like she's more depressed than an eating disorder. And I mean, the evidence was, you know, every time he weighed her and I kept saying, but I'm seeing these behaviors, but she's not eating. And at a certain point, he even said to me, mom, why don't you take a step back? And so many parents are told that in different words and different languages all across the world. Mom, why don't you take a step back? You're overreacting. And a lot of times what you were describing is true is that parents will take their child to the doctor. They're extremely concerned. In some cases, the child has fainted or you know, really become dizzy or we were seeing symptoms that are dangerous. And you know, a parent will take a child to the pediatrician and the pediatrician will put the kid on the scale and say, no, you're still five pounds overweight. Now, the child might've lost 20 in the past month, but the doctor is looking at the BMI as a bottom line without looking at anything else. So this is really, it's crippling us. I mean, it's really crippling us as parents, the ability to access help, even when it's available. Sometimes it's there, it's in front of you and you still can't access it. I'd love to hear a little bit about the self blame that gets certainly enhanced by the medical system, but is already there thanks to the cultural norms that we have. I mean, the self-blame is there um, and it's there in conjunction with, you know, the blame that's put upon us, you know, as parents. Um, I mean, we had a horrific experience. Um, my daughter was hospitalized and they called us in for a family session and all my kids had to come and we had to sit in a circle and the head psychiatrist actually went around the circle and said, what did you do to contribute to Gabriella's eating disorder? And it you know, it was a type of thing that like, I, I, I didn't react at the time because, you know, it was new and I was new and I didn't know I could react. I didn't know I was allowed to say, stop, you know, don't do this to my children. Don't do this to me. Um, and now obviously I wouldn't stand for it, but then, you know, as a brand new parent, I was just like, well, okay, I guess it's a valid question, especially if it's coming from a psychiatrist who's the head of a department of eating disorders. Um, and, and so that, you know, it's, it's blatant, but it's also, it was subtle sometimes to the point where, you know, I felt like my daughter was being pulled away from me. I felt like she was being distanced from me by the people who were treating her, but it was so subtle. I couldn't, I couldn't verbalize it. I couldn't say, oh, they did this or they did that. It was just this feeling I had. And I was just like, but I, I have a good relationship with my daughter, but we're, you know, I love her. She loves me. I can help her. I want to help her. 
And not only did we not get the tools to help her, but we were actually ripped away. And that did a lot of damage. I mean, eventually we were able to repair the damage, but it's like taking away the child's biggest resource at the time when they need it the most, you know, by pulling parents away. So I personally have been very affected by parent blaming. And I know that from speaking to all these parents through Feast, um, it's, you know, it's demoralizing and it's just, you know, it erodes all your self-confidence as a parent. Your child's diagnosed and, you know, even if you're a confident parent, in the back of your mind, in every parent's back of your mind, is that, did I do something? Could I have caught it? Did I see it? Did I not recognize it? You know, there's kind of like that. It doesn't happen from today till tomorrow. You know, there's a span of time and we miss it and we all miss it. And we miss it because eating disorders fly under the radar. You know, they're crafty, they're wily, they're clever. And so for parents, you know, you have this feeling and it just gets exacerbated when, you know, it comes to the medical establishment as well. And the problem is this is a time when you have to be empowered. Parents have to be empowered to help their child. And, you know, blame just erodes that empowerment and it really it cripples parents. So I see it as such, you know, I take it personally because I, I've been personally blamed, but I also, you know, professionally it kills me because, you know, sometimes parents will call me. A lot of times parents from Israel where I live will call, um, you know, just to ask about local resources. And the first thing I say is it's not your fault. And so many times they burst into tears because they've been holding it inside and you don't have time or space for that. Meaning when your kid is sick, you don't have time or space to really focus on, you know, that part of yourself, but it opens floodgates and it's just so harmful. You said so many good things here. And, and for new parents who are, who are new into this, who are watching, I think there's a few things that you said that I really want to kind of zoom in on. One is you're not imagining that people are blaming you. You're not imagining it. You're not crazy. Um, I mean, you, Judy, you explained it so well. Literally, this is what the medical establishment, and I keep saying used to think, and it's such a reminder that no, so much of our medical establishment still thinks this, that parents cause eating disorders, you have to set, or families cause eating disorders, you have to separate the child from the family in order to heal them, the parent activity that should be said. So new parents, if you're watching this, you are not imagining it. They're, the, the blame, however, however direct or indirect is, is there. I think the second piece is, I think all of us as parents can recognize, um, you know, when you see your child every day, and maybe especially during this pandemic, you see your children a lot, that then they see, you know, their aunt or their grandparent who hasn't seen them in a while, they're like, oh, they've gotten so tall. And you're like, oh, I didn't even really notice, right? Because they grow just a tiny bit day after day. And the same thing is true of the eating disorder. The kid didn't just wake up one day and then bam, an eating disorder is there today that wasn't there yesterday. The behaviors come day after day, slowly and slowly. And then also so many of the eating disorder behaviors are secretive. So we give this message to parents of like, please, please, please don't blame yourself. And that almost feels cruel to say that to parents in some ways, because it's really hard to not blame yourself when you are so worried about your child, when it feels like it happened right from underneath your nose and you have an entire medical establishment giving these subtle messages. 